since we're stuck here in Reedville for a long time and we don't want to bore the heck out of you, um, we're going to do an episode on useful things that we have learned and or read about. Life hacks, pretty much. Boat life hacks. I didn't want to use the word life hack. Uh, things that make living on a boat and cruising easier. So a lot of these things you may have heard of. But we're putting them into practice, and we're going to tell you how they work and how we like them. Number one is probably the most obvious fruit hammock. The fruit hammock has come in handy so, so many times, and we love it. And a very important thing to have next to the fruit hammock are these nasty, nasty fly tape things. Because the flies will come to the fruit, and then they will die. This is Carl. Carl is a hangy, hangy kitty, and he is on springs, and he was a gift from my brother. We use him as both a happy, happy kitty and a way of telling how far we are healing over when we are in the boat. And also to see the sea state, because sometimes we'll be anchored, and sadly, we actually don't feel the rocking of the boat. So we'll just look at Carl, and if he's sitting still, it's calm. If he's going like this... <laughs> well, our internal balance thing is not working right because we can't tell. <laughs> this space underneath our stove used to be an oven. Herbie took out the oven, and we use it as a place to store all of our pots and pans. And under the pots and pans, we have a whole bunch of these mason jars with, like, a piece of fabric over top of them. Herbie made this uh, netting here with a little clip so that we can easily access the things inside but when we're sailing slash when we're being perfectly still and just kind of clumsy uh, the stuff the contents inside do not fall out all over the floor this is our dog he's a corgi uh, because we live on a boat and corgis are great but also, they're great for boats because, first of all, they don't have tails, so their tails can't get stuck in the lines, and second of all, they're short, and they don't take up much space. Also, corgis don't have legs, <laughs> so it is much harder for him to lose his balance because he has a lower sense of gravity. Center. Center. He's also highly intelligent. As can be seen here. <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> as we've talked about in other videos, this is not a bed. <laughs> this is actually insulation for two layers of insulation for our fridge and freezer because we often have to turn them off since we're not getting um, constant flows of electricity since the solar panels don't always put out as much power as they possibly can. So, um, having the shiny, shiny car things on here really helps to keep in the cold. And then we put an extra layer of quilt insulation just in case, and it turns it into a freezer box, an ice box. So, it's very useful. In order to have a more cushiony bed, we put in a mattress pad of memory foam on top of a memory foam mattress. And then in order to hold that in, because it kept sliding over, uh, Herbie cut this headboard. So that's been really awesome for us. Now a lot of people struggle with mildew when their bed is in the V-berth on top of uh, water tanks such as ours. So we have a special trick for that too. Mildew is just a general problem under beds in general because you're hot and it's cold underneath and you'll get condensation under there and then you get mildew right away. So they sell these really expensive but cool tiles that breathe well or you can go to the El Chifo route and just get some wood battens from Home Depot. We have a bunch of them and we just have them staggered and this area is actually completely dry. Yeah, we were having trouble with mildew until we tried this method and it was perfect. It works really, really well and it's cheap. Yeah. 
and that's the important part. Yes. <laughs> oh, and we uh, we cut the mattress with a knife. Oh and yeah, <laughs> the, the mattress is from IKEA. Yeah. It's a uh, queen because the bed starts off actually as a king, but king mattresses were too expensive, so we went with queen, <laughs> and then we just trimmed it down to the tiny little point that it comes to. <laughs> With a knife. Yeah. <laughs> Just a regular kitchen knife. And then, to keep cool at night, you open the hatch. That's all nice and all. But To get just, airflow. Yeah, it just doesn't get as much air into the boat as you wish it did. So, we have this wind scoop. And we simply tie it to a halyard outside. And it just sucks all the air in. Shall I set it up? Sure. So, Herbie's attaching the wind scoop right now. And you can tell it's already working really well. It's scooping all the wind that comes into the boat right into the bed. So when we sleep, it's actually really cool and we have no trouble with like still sweaty air. Hi. Hello. So out here, all I do is tie the top of it to our staysail halyard. If you're on a sloop, just tie it to anything. <laughs> and it just catches all the air. That's it. Now, a really important trick. Uh, when we first set up our wind scoop, we had it set over the hatch. Don't do that because then all the air ends up hitting the deck and it doesn't actually come inside too well. So set it up from inside coming up through. So you can see we just open the hatch all the way just to get out of the way of it. And the wind scoop shelves the air right down onto us. Here you go. <laughs> up here in the V-Birth, there's one more thing that's really, really useful, and that is just these lines here that Herbie has uh, attached from hooks on each end of the bed. So you can see they run all the way across, and we use them for a variety of things. Right now we're using them so that we can adjust the wind scoop, and also so that we can hold open the uh, the screen part portion of the hatch. They're also great for if you have minor flooding or leaks and they get on clothes and stuff, you can use it as a uh, clothesline. And also we hang various things like more fly tape. Another thing that makes life really easy when anchoring is to just keep your stern hook in a PVC pipe lashed to the stern pulpit. So here we have a big fortress anchor and all the road that we usually use as a stern hook. So it's all set. All we have to do is pull it out, run out the road, and it's done. We don't have to go rummaging through lockers or any other things that just take up a lot of time and make you end up not using the stern hook at all. If your significant other says they don't want to go cruising because they don't want to give up their garden, tell them they can have two flowers on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> so I simply made this garden. It's a hanging garden and it's made out of recycled water bottles. This garden's actually five years old right now and it's just stitched together. I made little pockets like this and if you can remember to water the plants, they'll grow nicely and you can take your flowers or herbs or vegetables with you. And uh, when we were in the marina, Herbie had a water system that was hooked up, just a hose that he poked holes in that went all around the garden. So it was really thriving when we were actually at home because we could just have the water constantly trickling into the flowers. Yeah, I, I set up a soaker hose so it was always dripping on them, so they were always happy. Uh, here, it's kind of like an eternal drought followed by salt. So, an easy thing you can use with any sail, especially your main sail if it's not a furler, is a downhaul. So it does a couple things. When you're at anchor, you can just tighten it down, and then you don't have to worry about your main going up in the middle of the night if you just get somewhere and just pull it down fast. The other really cool thing is you release the halyard and it's blowing like stink and there's so much pressure on the sail it just won't come down. You don't want to be up here yanking on the loft trying to get it to come down. Instead, you just grab the downhaul, just pull it down. The thing comes down like a window blind. So we have it set up on our main, on the staysail, and on the jib. It's uh, a must-have for us. And, and all three of them are red. 
Yeah. So <laughs> on the boat, we just have halyards and sheets are blue, and then downhauls are red. Everything is color coordinated. That's yeah. important. And the other thing, we have the downhauls for the head sails led back to the mast area. So if it's really bad and we got to get the head sail down, we don't have to go up to the forepeak in horrible weather to get the sail down. We just grab the downhaul, sit, just pull it in, and pray that it comes. Another great addition for us was this netting that we wove in uh, so that nothing can fall over. It was mostly for Morty because he really likes to get on the edge of things and freak us out. So it prevents him from falling over, but also when we're being jostle jostled around, there are many things that are on the deck that could go over, like the grill, for instance. It keeps that nice and secure and also helps with minor stuff like giant jugs of diesel and life preservers. In the head here we have the glorious composting toilet. It may sound gross, but it actually cuts a lot of costs when it comes to pump outs and it smells much better than a holding tank. Along those lines, we also have uh, one of these things. <laughs> uh, it's really great for storing your shampoos and such in the head where you have very minimal space. Storing clothes is made a lot easier if you have bins such as this. This is a big plastic bin. This is my pants drawer. Uh, and it just helps a little bit with organization, which can be really hard on a boat. Um, over here I have my bathing suit bin and these cute little drawers that fit perfectly from Ikea in our little spaces. So an all-chain road is great because you don't have to worry about uh, chafe and it gives you a better catenary curve so you don't have to put out as much scope. The problem is that the chain is inelastic, so if you're in bad weather and it starts yanking on you, it's gonna yank and you're gonna feel it lurching on the boat, so it's quite horrible. To avoid that issue, all you need to do is tie a snubber. Now I have it tied short and out of the water here, that way you can see it. It's simply a Magnus hitch tied to the chain, and the chain is slack, but the nylon snubber, which is a rope, takes up the last bit of force. So if there is any yanking or lurching, it's on the rope and then we don't feel the shock because the rope acts as a nice shock absorber. When it's set properly, what you want to see is that the anchor chain simply hangs down straight and that the rope runs out at an angle. That lets you know that the rope is actually taking up the force. Our snubber is about 20 feet long, so it gives us plenty of elasticity and it makes anchoring really calm and quiet even in rough seas. Another really helpful thing that we've done, it may sound dumb to some people, but it really helped me, um, is we named each sail. We gave them names where the first letter corresponded with the first letter of the actual name of the sail. So our main sail is Monty, our staysail is Stanley, our jib is Josh, and our... Um, storm sail is actually PJ. That's the only one that breaks the rules because we put him up at night during storms. So PJ, pajamas, Herbie came up with that one. Anyway, it really helped me to name the sails because when I was trying to learn which sail was which, it was easier for me to respond quickly if Herbie said hoist Josh or um, pull in Stan or something like that. I was able to actually do that without being like, which one is the staysail? It worked for me. When it comes to storing your produce, there's some really critical things you need to do. So one, apples and other fruits can be stored together, but do not store citrus fruits with them because they'll ripen faster. And then onions and garlic can go together. They just have to be in a well-ventilated area. And then potatoes, sweet potatoes, russet, all those kinds, they like dark, well ventilated. So we keep them down in here in this locker. So at night, our anchor light up at the very top meets the legal requirements for an anchor light where it's visible from all, di all directions. The problem with it is it's also easy to confuse it with a star up in the sky. And you 
it's so far above and if you're actually close to the boat the anchor light is probably out of your field of view because you have to look straight up to find it so we've hung those little solar powered LED lanterns one off the bow and one off the stern and we set them to flash uh, that way they don't get confused with a navigational marker or something and we're hoping that that'll help warn people where our bow and stern is because we found at night people get ridiculously close to us when they're coming in, coming in to anchor and we just wonder if they just simply don't know how big we are and where our, where we start and where we finish. So this is the light that we're using on the stern. It's one of those simple solar powered lights and it just flashes away. So I know with bike lights uh, the battery life is ridiculously long in the flash setting and much shorter in the steady settings. So we're hoping that this might make it through the, the night. We can see it's just a simple light. It's by Lucy. Uh, originally they come with a red top, but when you leave them out in the sun, they fade. And you have to leave them in the sun, that way they can charge. So they end up looking more like a silver thing. And they just have multiple settings. You have the, the steady, steady bright, the blinking, and then a red SOS, which you definitely don't want to leave that as the setting because one you're going to call people over with an SOS message and two you could really be confused for a red marker so don't do that make sure you leave it flashing on white or on steady if you have any fun ideas or helpful tidbits to make sailing and living aboard easier please leave them down in the comments section below Thanks so much for watching, and if you want to become a sailing buddy, you can click the link down below to our Patreon account. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel, and when you click subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell in the annotation. That way you get notifications as soon as our next video is uploaded. Thanks so much!